Hello and welcome to the demonstration video of the series 6780 AVAC and fill dispensing units. Fluidine control systems has a range of different products and services to suit the automotive assembly line filling applications. So our dispensing units come in two different flavors. The first one being standard dispensing units which don't really require evacuation prior to filling and the second type being evacuation based dispensing units. Now what we mean by evacuation based dispensing is that we have to first evacuate the vehicle reservoir of the liquid which which we are filling completely we have to take it down to a very low vacuum and then we have to start the filling process the machine that we are going to see here today is exactly this type of a system this is the brake oil filling system which uses the evac and fill mechanism the brake oil machine is made up of a different number of sub assemblies which work in tandem to give you accurate evacuation as well as filling the first sub assembly being the transfer sub assembly which comprises of the main barrel suction tube this tube is basically inserted inside the barrel and then the liquid is transferred from the barrel by the barrel suction pump into our brake oil tank which is inbuilt inside the machine in this case the tank is about 100 liters The tank is enabled with a four-point level transmitter, which senses four different levels inside the tank, and it allows the operator to even know what the current level is and whether he should bring the barrel in for um, a top-up. Basically, right. the second sub-assembly is essentially the most important one in a brake filling machine, which is the evacuation assembly. The evacuation assembly consists of a very high-capacity vacuum pump, which is capable of generating vacuum as low as one millibar. for a brake filling system and we also have vacuum compatible pneumatic valves in the entire circuit as well as traps for the air to come inside uh thirdly we have the dispensing assembly so the dispensing assembly comprises of the dispensing pump which is in general a positive displacement gear pump type and a positive displacement flow meter which is continuously counting the volume of uh brake uh, oil which is transferred from the storage tank to the reservoir and of course our standard bending valve which would shut off once the transfer is complete and the hose and the uh, dripless nozzle the dripless nozzle essentially allows zero drip operation so uh, we basically control the nozzle at its point of delivery and that's what ensures the zero drip action which uh, all assembly lines demand because of housekeeping uh, practices the fourth sub assembly in this entire system is the electronics and the electronic control which essentially forms the brain or the central processing unit of the entire system so um, right off the bat on the front of the system we have the standard hmi panel which is the human machine interface this is the primary source of interaction uh, between the operator and the machine we also have a couple of useful buttons that the operator can press uh, such as the main emergency stop to stop the machine in any case in any kind of an emergency or there are also some other buttons such as the auto cycle the selection between auto modes manual modes the preparation cycle and the suck back cycle and so on and so forth so the operator can not only command the machine using these buttons but he can also interact with the machine through the hmi the hmi has a couple of different menus available for the operator's reference he can check the io statuses he can look at the input list he can see which of the inputs are currently on which of the outputs are currently on which of the outputs are off and so on and so forth we we also have a mimic panel built into the hmi which essentially tells any operator what this system is exactly made up of in in the mimic mimic panel we've essentially built the entire system on a screen so that he knows the flow of the liquid and how the system has been built going forward inside the machine inside the electronics panel we have a couple of different components The first sub assembly that we would like to study is how safely the machine operates under different surge conditions. In order to remove complete the surge on power lines, we have our own isolation transformer and different circuit breakers such as MPCBs and MCBs in place. All the IOs are again controlled through relay boards. There is no IO that is directly pinned to the PLC IO board. Thirdly, we also have an SMPS or a switch mode power supply. which powers all the dc components of the machine and fourthly you also have your primary controller which is the programming logic controller 
which in this machine is Mitsubishi make, but you also have an option of using Allen Bradley or Siemens for that matter. Along with the PLC, we also have an option of you know providing different uh, interface cards such as Modbus or Profibus or CC Link. Any of the industrial protocols accepted today can be plugged in with a PLC and an output can be made compatible to these subsystems on the customer side. This being a bra brake oil filling machine, um, we have a lot of inquiries coming in for ABS based filling systems. So all modern day vehicles now have an anti-lock braking system which enables uh, safety while riding or driving a vehicle. That's why we've also been able to interface with a vehicle interface network controller that would directly speak to the ABS ECU in the vehicle and command it to allow us to fill and evacuate the, the chamber or the uh, port that we are filling in. And lastly, uh, we also have the added advantage of industrial IoT 4.0 built in all of our systems and this system is no exception. For that, we have two components, the flow link, which is mounted, it's a discrete component mounted inside the panel. And we also have something known as a Fluidine data integrator, which is mounted on the top of the machine. The data integrator comes in handy when you have a number of different machines in the vicinity. And you would like to collect data from all of them and then send the data collectively through one gateway to the FlowLog cloud service. To know more about the FlowLog cloud service, please check the link in the des description box and you can uh, even contact sales if you have any queries. The data integrator would essentially pick up the data from different machines and it would then send this data via a SIM enabled uh, connection to the FlowLog cloud service. In this demonstration video, we will take a look at all the cycles in a typical brake oil filling machine. After the machine runs the preparation and the air leak tests, the machine is ready for operation. Upon pressing the start key, the machine begins the vacuum cycle and evacuates the reservoir to nearly 5 millibar. After this, the machine holds the vacuum and waits to identify leaks in the assembly if any. Once the evacuation is successful, the machine moves forward to the filling cycle. In here, brake oil in dot 3, dot 4 or dot 5 variants is filled under positive pressure of 1 to 3 bar. The filling quantity is decided by the preset obtained from barcodes or manual recipes. After the machine cuts off the filling due to buildup of back pressure, the leveling cycle begins, wherein excess brake oil is sucked back into the machine and levels are maintained between min and max. After the completion of the suck back, the machine deems the cycle complete and a printed receipt of the transaction can be obtained. Through this video, it is understood that Fluidine's brake oil machine is more than just an accurate dispensing unit. It acts as a QC manager via its ability to detect faults and provide diagnostics to fix them at the same time. Check the link in the description box to connect with us for your requirement. Thanks for watching.